Well, we turn our attention to the last um, segment of lifespan, at least covered in this book. And this is one of those examples where <clears throat> we are covering a lot of room in a short amount of space. So um, we're going to uh, pay attention in the same um, different, uh, the same categories we have uh, regarding just adulthood. And interestingly enough, for a long time, uh, researchers really didn't think that much happened during adulthood when, in fact, uh, a lot actually does happen. Now, there are granted uh, barely perceptible physical declines in early adulthood, but they accelerate middle and late. And uh, research suggests that people are not as predictable um, as some stage theorists have argued. Um, life events, even chance occurrences, influence adult life in very unanticipated ways. And there are two basic concepts in our life, love and work, that mostly dominate adulthood. And the reality is, is we spend a lot more time in adulthood than we do in any other portion of our life so to speak. So let's talk first of all uh, about physical development and each of these in some respects really has to be divided up um, in segments and I'll try to do that as concisely as I can. Um, muscular strength, uh, reaction time, sensory uh, perceptibility, cardiac output, all crest in the mid-20s and then slowly begin to decline as time moves along. Uh, these are relatively barely perceptible. People really don't notice them um, in early adulthood, but then we begin to notice more and more of them. And if you listen to any of your professors, probably including myself, we make mention of the fact of our growing awareness of our age. Uh, so one of the major things that hits, at least for women, is uh, the cessation of their, uh, their uh, menstrual cycle called menopause. And what really is key in understanding the impact of this, which uh, is part of the overall um, package, if you will, in terms of how a woman actually responds, has a lot to do with her expectation of it. Um, th some see it as uh, uh, a freedom from uh, the one's period, particularly if it's painful, um, they are quite happy to be done, done with it and rid of it. Um, and ultimately, women's attitudes and expectations really do impact the emotional impact of some. For some, this is the loss of, in their mind, of uh, femininity. And in others' minds, it, like I said, is it's an increasing level of femininity. I'm sorry. Uh, it is a increasing level of of freedom, really. And so, uh, menopause expectation plays in, and what you will find the more we talk about this is that the role that expectation plays, even in the end of life. Uh, the, the book talks a little bit about a syndrome uh, or a phenomenon called the death deferral phenomenon. And again, some of this uh, really is impacted by the mind, which is where expectations come from. And that phenomenon is, is that more, more people uh, die uh, just after Christmas or just after their birthday or just after significant holidays, and that's all very much a part of this death deferral idea. And so we, we tend to emphasize how important our mind is, but this is a, a classic example of how it impacts uh, the physical development and ultimately life expectancy for a lot of people. Um, more Americans died on two days after Christmas than on Christmas and two days after, just as an example. So the physical development aspect, again, is, is part of it. The other, the other thing is, is if we middle adult or early adulthood is probably more like um, 
uh, emerging adulthood. There, the, you don't really notice a lot of changes, uh, but middle adulthood, you begin to notice a little bit more of, uh, of the changes that occur. Um, obviously, women mature earlier than men, but they also peak earlier than men. Uh, physical vigor has less to do with age than it does with uh, health habits and health exer and exercise itself. Um, and all of those come into play in middle adulthood. Uh, the, the acceleration of, of uh, decline uh, really begins to take effect. And we begin to see more and more of it as time moves along. Um, one of the contributing factors here is something that is often referred to as telomeres. Um, and what uh, tell, uh, I got to make sure that I'm, I'm uh, spelling that correctly. I believe I am. Uh, telomeres, yes. And telomeres, uh, which are pictured uh, right here, is the red that you see is the part of the fraying, a little bit like a shoestring, on, on these chromosomes, which contributes to the aging process. And this, the, the telomeres have been identified as uh, part of the aging of cells, uh, the uh, dying off of cells, and and uh, they signal that change, dying off of cells. They signal that change in aging as, as a result. Um, in later life, now we go to late adulthood, um, you, you begin to see more and more of these changes occurring, muscle strength, reaction time, uh, perceptual acuity, uh, life-threatening illnesses which have to do with um, the immune system weakening over time. Uh, the interesting thing about that is, is that the immune system does weaken, but because of frequent exposure, there are certain things that older people don't experience as much, like colds and flus and things like that, unless they're um, unless their system has already been compromised in a lot of other ways. So um, low stress and good health habits uh, enable longevity. Uh, what you have pictured in your book is a, 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 a ravishing young lady at the, the ripe old age of 122 uh, who lived that way, and probably a lot because of stress and and uh, the uh, health habits she engaged in. The other thing we tend to see is a pr slowing of the neural process. Um, and this is a normal thing, but it also contributes to like uh, driving ability and things of that sort that uh, uh, increasingly states are more and more um, uh, aware of. Uh, lastly, the thing that also kind of hits the radar, uh, which you may even have a, a grandparent or a, even a parent who might be experiencing, is Alzheimer's. Now, the thing to distinguish about Alzheimer's is the fact that it is um, it falls in a category of of uh, brain uh, disease, if you will, called dementia, and. Alzheimer, it, Alzheimer's is, is actually a subset of dementia. It is not the same as dementia. Uh, you can have vascular dementia, basically the uh, loss of brain cells, and, and some adults do suffer a substantial amount of a loss of brain cells. And this disintegration uh, after the age of 85 roughly doubles every five years. But Alzheimer's is, is a subset, and the, the slowing of the neural processes are, are very much a part of just the aging process in general, and the, you see a number of uh, evidences of that in terms of uh, memory and other things that we'll talk about here in a minute. So uh, Alzheimer's is, is uh, um, ultimately a progressive disease, 
what we begin to know by the time the person dies and looking at the brain tissue itself is two different things that we uh, see in the brain tissue is called barks and tangles. Um, it kind of um, uh, <clears throat> describes basically what the nerve tissues actually look for. Uh, we, we see also atrophy of the brain tissue, which means that a little bit like the um, MRI I showed you of the alcohol-dependent woman where the ventricles grow larger simply because brain cells are dying off. So those are a few of the highlights when it comes to talking about just physical development itself during uh, adulthood. But remember, when we talk about adulthood, we're not talking about a uniform period of time. We're talking about early adulthood, um, uh, middle, and late, and each one has different characteristics that are part of the overall picture that we refer to as adulthood.